King Lop violently grabs Princess Morgan by the neck and pins her against the wall. He then rips off her dress in front of all the soldiers and tries to dominate her, because she just accused him of being a lazy cunt. Princess Morgan doesn't back down as she swings her hips and keeps pressuring him if he has the guts to do it. But as the soldiers snicker and stare at her with lewd looks, King Lot suddenly drags Morgan away by her hair because he has a more brutal punishment for her. King Lot then ties Morgan's hands to a stick and leaves her in the middle of the wasteland. Actually, he knew that Morgan had seduced him into an alliance in order to use him to eliminate King Other's illegitimate son so that she could ascend to the throne with little effort. However, King Law believes that Morgan has failed to recognize the nature of their alliance and where the true power lies, so he dropped her off in the middle of nowhere for a night of reflection. If she's lucky enough not to be in by the wolves, she'll still have a chance to work with him. As the night wears on, a mysterious mist shrouds Morgan's surroundings. Morgan looks around warily but realizes that it's not the wolves, but the devil she's been trading witchcraft with that's ahead of her. Although the devil constantly murmurs he is wrong to her. Morgan has no idea who the devil is pointing at. Fortunately, at least she makes it through the night under the devil's protection. The next morning, King Lot wakes her up by stroking her cheek. He expects Morgan, his ally, to be more disciplined after a night of punishment. Since the sword of the gods has been pulled out by Arthur, there is no point for him to give Arthur five dawns to leave the realm. So King Lot decides to attack Arthur tonight. On the other hand, Arthur, who has been in a coma for a day and a night, finally wakes up. He still can't believe he actually drew the sword of the gods. Though he's still a little weak, Merlin insists on organizing Arthur's coronation tonight. Hundreds of warriors have come to see Arthur pull up the sword of the gods and make him king. Morgan arrives at the castle on horseback, but she's here to send a message. Morgan tells Merlin about King Lot's plan to attack tonight, and she leaves with a message wishing them good luck. So Merlin prepares for battle and makes sure the coronation goes off without a hitch. I present to you your undoubted king! And so it was that Arthur was crowned, watched and cheered by the crowd, and then made his proclamation as king. He would not fail to fulfill the high expectations of those present and would rule his people in a new way. Arthur then appointed his brother Kay as marshal, and his foster father and savior Lentez as royal guard. I am Arthur Pendragon, and I am proud to be your king. After the king's coronation, the crowd was in the midst of a joyous party. It was then that Arthur saw the blonde girl who had captivated him, so he went up to her to continue the beautiful encounter that had been interrupted the last time. He finally learns her name, Guinevere. The two of them had a nice conversation, and then they went to the terrace by the sea in the spirit of the drink. Guinevere looked down at the ocean and asked, Would it kill me to jump from here? Next thing you know, Arthur is on the fence. Do you think that sea is down there? Do you want to find out? <laughs> While the two of them are having a good time, the ambience is suddenly interrupted by the arrival of Lentes. The guard, Arthur wanted to introduce Guinevere to Lentes, but he was embarrassed not to know that they knew each other. This is my betrothed. I am. This truth definitely hit Arthur hard, although Arthur tried to fake a smile to congratulate them on their engagement. He was still upset when he saw their intimate behavior and had to leave. While he is still in the sadness of his lost love, he realizes that the enemy has already entered the party in disguise. The battle begins in an instant. Merlin immediately had Arthur evacuated. But King Lot, who wanted to take Arthur's life, came after him. Arthur's adoptive father immediately rushed out to avenge the murder of his wife. Obviously, the two of them are very different in terms of fighting strength. The arrogant King Lot even put down his sword and stabbed Arthur's foster father with a spear instead. King Lot thought that the killing was over. But Arthur's foster father was able to endure the pain of the spear penetrating his abdomen and approached King Lot a little bit. Then he took out the dagger he had hidden on his body and died with King Lot. King Lot never thought that he would die in such an ungrateful way. Arthur's adoptive father avenged his wife's death and paved the way for Arthur with his life. A woman walks into the jungle late at night looking for the devil she's been trading with. She undresses and tells the devil that she needs more. Not long ago, King Lot, who was allied with Princess Morgan for the throne, was killed, putting Morgan's ambitious plans on hold. Morgan can only watch as Arthur, 
the illegitimate son of the former king, takes the throne she so desperately wants. Morgan and Arthur are half-siblings. In fact, Arthur, not wanting to antagonize his sister, suggested that he could share the throne with her. It's either you or me, call me both. Why not? For you, this is nothing. For me, everything. Men are not my way to this. I'll find another way to take it. After leaving Camelot Castle, Morgan went deep into the woods to continue his dealings with the devil. It's always calm before the storm. The biggest blow Arthur had to face was the fact that his beloved Guinevere would be married in his guard Lentis in three days. Guinevere's expectations of this engagement, which she has had since she was a child, are shaken when she meets King Arthur. A wedding, which is to be held in the castle, is a bit awkward for both of them. Just then, Morgan sends her maid to invite Arthur to her castle for dinner. Merlin was still trying to figure out what Morgan was up to, but an unhappy Arthur didn't hesitate to say yes. Merlin has no choice but to accompany him. When the two of them arrive at the castle, Morgan is waiting in full costume. I'm honored. Thank you. Morgan's sudden change of attitude to subservience was a surprise to both of them. Merlin was never convinced that she was sincere in her quest for peace. Morgan prepares a sumptuous dinner, but Merlin is too cautious to eat, so Morgan tastes Arthur's soup first. And so the dinner went on in such a pleasant atmosphere. After the dinner, Arthur fell asleep in Morgan's castle. Morgan came to visit him in his room late at night. The two of them were now as close as siblings can be without hatred. But this time Morgan approached him with a purpose. On the surface, she said she wanted to get to know her brother and made Arthur drop his defenses. Then she pretended to accidentally cut Arthur's chest when she was about to wipe him. Her ring was then stained with Arthur's blood and she left the room. Satisfied, Merlin was still standing in the hall, so Morgan invited him for a drink. But after a couple of drinks, Merlin started to lose consciousness. When he realizes that something is wrong, it's too late, because Morgan is already sitting on top of him. Merlin tried his best to stay awake, holding Morgan's head in his hands. He suddenly and unexpectedly realized that it was she who had poisoned King Other. Because the little girl who had disguised herself when Morgan poisoned him was the same girl she had been when she was young. However, the drug in the wine had already taken full effect, causing Merlin to fall heavily to the ground. When he woke up again, he found himself tied to the bed by Morgan. Morgan collected Merlin's hair and nails and began some evil rituals. When he came to his senses, Merlin accused Morgan of having poisoned her father. But Morgan said that the man was not worthy of being her father. Merlin knew that Morgan was deeply hurt and kindly reminded her that the sorcery she was using would not make her strong, but would cost her dearly. But Morgan, determined to take back her throne, doesn't listen. What Merlin doesn't know is that after his poisoning last night, a distraught Arthur has left the castle. After dreaming of Guinevere again, he decides to confess his innermost feelings to Guinevere. On the night of her wedding, the bride secretly gets up and takes the deer's blood. She hid under the bed and pours it on the white sheets. The blood was enough to fool the others. Guinevere and Lentus were childhood sweethearts, betrothed since childhood. But then the handsome King Arthur burst into Guinevere's world. They met on the beach and fell in love at first sight. Arthur was dismayed to learn that Guinevere was betrothed. But his love for Guinevere was uncontrollable. So he snuck into Guinevere's bed on the morning of the wedding. Tell me, you're not thinking of me and I'll leave you alone. Meet me at the beach. Guinevere, after much internal struggle, finally showed up at the beach a short time later. The first thing Arthur said when he saw her was to ask Guinevere not to marry Lintez. He believed that an unspeakable love had sprung up between them, both on the beach where they had first met and at the ball that night at the king's coronation. Guinevere couldn't deny the love, but was adamant that it was too late. Getting married. Don't. Are you asking me as my king? Or as a complete stranger who's only met me twice, who's decided that he can order me about? But Arthur questions why she came to this beach if she didn't have the same feelings for him. You came because you wanted this too. No. Maybe. The two of them eventually came close to each other and kissed. They gave themselves to each other, body and soul. On that beach, Guinevere then told Arthur that after this one moment, their affair was over and that it would remain a secret in their hearts. After all, she chose to remain married to her childhood sweetheart, Lentes. On the way back, they met a deer that had been shot by an arrow. Guinevere immediately filled a wine bag with deer's blood for her wedding night. Back at the chateau, the atmosphere was one of wedding joy. Arthur was at a loss as to how to face his savior. Lentes, the groom of the evening, 
Lentes even asked Arthur to perform the wedding ceremony for him, and Arthur could only agree awkwardly. And then, to the sound of a beautiful song, the bride, accompanied by her father, slowly entered the room. Guinevere passed Arthur and came to the groom. Arthur could only bear the pain in his heart and perform the marriage ceremony for the newlyweds. May these rings stand forever as a symbol of your unity and fidelity. May you live and grow old together, knowing only the truth of undying love. Meanwhile, King Arthur's sister, Morgan, began to use Arthur's blood for witchcraft. By doing so, she was able to see what Arthur's eyes had witnessed and thus learned the secrets hidden within his heart. 